Hey there, and welcome to my first podcast. This isn't my first attempt at my first podcast, but that one didn't go so well. Anne. Okay. I know they've been very popular colors, so they've shown up more places, and I have loved them. Oh, good God, Audrey. Stop! This is awful. You are bad. I gotta be in the right mood to work on cables, man. I just... Thank you. It was just all vintage. Don't do that. But not in the Buffalo area anymore. Would you? <gasps> Drop it. She's never eaten yarn before. What was that? So this time I'm here to try again. I got some new equipment. Hopefully my cats won't be able to interfere as much as they did the first time. Since this is the first podcast, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Bailey. I live in Syracuse, New York with my husband, our two cats, and two dogs. I'm mostly a knitter, but I also do a lot of crochet and some occasional sewing, even though I'm not as proficient at that as I would like to be. Um, I've got a lot of stuff here. I'm kind of just basing this off of other people's podcasts. So I'm going to show all of my whips that I currently have going. I do have a recent finished object and I have some recent acquisitions that I want to show. It kind of doesn't make sense that I'm showing acquisitions and finished objects since I haven't done this before, but I did do a video about my yarn stash and kind of establishing that and establishing that on Ravelry. So I guess it kind of makes sense if you look at it in that light. Like I've shown everything that I have and where I was at the beginning of starting this project. So these are things that I've acquired since I did my yarn stash video. Um, I guess it makes the most sense to start with whips, right? Um, this one, this one is to go in my craft room. It's craft room inspired. I started making this throw blanket to go in here. Uh, it's going to be a slow going one. I'm not rushing through it, but as I was doing my yarn stash, I was finding a lot, especially a lot of acrylic, which I don't use as much anymore and I don't really know what to do with, but I find it's the best for blankets because it, it insulates really, really well. And of course it's cheap when you have to buy such large quantities for blankets. I had this mint color, which I believe is Karen uh, One Pound, and it just goes with everything in the craft room. I've already got so many different greens in here, but I do have a lot of mint going around and I thought it was... It was really cute once I started to pair it with this uh, brown, this very gold brown color. And I wasn't sold on it at first, but once I swatched it, I really, really loved how they look together. Uh, the gold is Lion Brand Jeans in Top Stitch, which is acrylic, but it's so, so soft. Oh, it is Karen one time. Look at that. I stayed on top of it. Save my label. The color is pale green. But it's very minty. I would call it mint. So I've got a lot of this top stitch. This pattern is it's from Pearl Soho. I, it's a free one on a blog of theirs. I think it's called Jute Stitch. I don't remember what the pattern is. So <laughs> there's one part pale green and then there's two parts of the double collar here and then the other half of the blanket is just the brown color. So I guess this is one sixth of the blanket, this is a third, and then one half is going to be just the, the top stitch color, which I think is going to be really pretty. Like I said, this one's really slow going. This isn't something that I'm trying to rush through. It's kind of a nice one to unwind with when there are days when none of my other whips really strike me. And for now, no pressure. I'm just going to keep chipping away at it and I don't I've never knit an afghan before or I've never knit a blanket I've done a bunch of crochet afghans um and it's a lot but and this one's pretty small too it's a, it's a throw blanket it's not huge but I think it'll be nice when it's done and I'm not going to push myself to get it done faster it's not going to help the finished product so one of my main whips right now is from this book the coffee house knits book See if I can. Ooh, excuse me, Annie. This is Annie. 
If you haven't already met, she interferes a lot, so perhaps you have. Um, so this one that I'm working on, I started for my travel knitting video. And this is called House Blend Cardigan. This book is by Carrie Bogert. I really love it. I've made several of them so far. It's really nice, simple patterns that I enjoy a lot. But this cardigan I chose specifically because I was doing some traveling and I wanted travel knitting because it's mostly stocking it. There's very large uh, patches of one by one ribbing, very large. The hem has eight inches of one by one ribbing. The sleeve cuffs have six inches. Um, and the rest is all stocking it. So, See if I can find my finished panels here. Yes. Oh, I, thought that, I didn't expect to love it. I love when this happens. When I, you know, I chose this yarn because it's super lightweight. Again, it was a travel project. I specifically was thinking about taking it on the road. And it's this chainette yarn from Lion Brand. I think I've got a skein in here. It's low tide which it, they're all these very sweet pale pastels. It's all artificial. I don't know exactly what. It says 81% acrylic, 19% polyester, uh, but it's really lightweight and it's a chainette, so it's hollow. Um, I didn't realize until I got it out in the sun, but it actually sparkles. Like something in the middle is plasticky and, and very glittery and not in a bad way. I kind of, I really liked it. Um, but I had a lot of these because I don't know if you can see it, but I got these at Christmas tree shops for $1.99 a piece. So I got a lot of them and a sweater duster is such a large garment. It's not something that I'm going to ever make out of a nicer yarn that costs more money. So I thought this was a good opportunity. It's easy to bring a lot of these on the road because they're so light. Uh, but it ended up being a really great match. I genuinely love it. I've I've worked so much more on this than I thought I would. I thought this one would end up being kind of tedious and I wouldn't want to keep going on it. And I've really been powering through it. I've got both front panels done. I've got the back panel done. Today I just finished the first sleeve and, whoops, uh, just this afternoon, cast on the second sleeve. So it's a nice breezy day at Sleeve Island. Excuse me, young lady. I'm flying through this one. I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, it should be done pretty soon. I hope to wear it when I film the rest of my travel knitting video, which I've got a road trip coming up at the end of May. So hopefully I can finish it mid-May, get ready to film and, and jump into that video. So my, my other whip that I'm extremely excited about, um, is not in this bag. It's in a different bag. My other whip that I'm extremely excited about is the Honey Bop cardigan from Poison Girls. Um, it's a fingering weight knit, which is not something I do a lot. And I'm making it out of the Sorella line that came out last year uh, in a collab with TL Yarn Crafts, and it's called something so summery and it's escaping me right now. Sun soaked, so summery, right? The sun soaked line between Sorella and Teal Yarn Crafts that came out last year. I got three skeins of Catalina, I believe. Um, I'm alternating all three because mathematically I didn't wanna just alternate two and then end up on the sleeves with only one skein left. Um, oh goodness, now I'm out, okay. So I've got all three in here in these little holders. It's such a pretty tonal. I don't normally splurge on yarn. I I love hand dyed. I don't know how you couldn't love hand dyed, but it's it's such a dent in the budget and I really mostly enjoy making garments. Um, so the cost of buying hand dyed to make a full garment can get so high so quick that I don't usually but they really got me with this one. They were such pretty colors and I'm a sucker for Tony Lipsy's patterns and everything she does. So I went in and I got three. And Catalina is this very pretty, it's like lilac and pink and there's a little bit of peach uh, tonal. And 
The Honey Bob Cardigan is this really cute vintage inspired, like everything Boys and Girls does is vintage inspired. And I really love it. I've been working on this one for a while. This is not my go-to project. I don't normally knit fingering and it's a slog. Um, not to say it's a bad pattern or that it's not a good choice of yarn for it, but I'm not used to the tiny needles. I'm a much less patient knitter than this calls for. So this is a project that I kind of built up in my mind. I had this yarn for a long time. I bought this pattern when I got the yarn knowing I wanted to use it for this and I didn't cast on for a while, which is not like me. I get excited and I buy stuff and I jump in feet first right away. Um, this one I sat on for a long time and I'm really happy with the choice, but I'm also just sitting with it. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna do it correctly. I bought some cute vintage buttons that I'm gonna use on the front when it's done, but for now it's a backup. It's a rainy day project. This is not something that I'm pushing through quickly. Kind of like my my little afghan here that I'm working on from Pearl Soho. Um, I've got like my go 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 projects and then I've got some others for the days when I need a break from those. So this one I really love and I kind of forgot about it. When I did my first attempt at this podcast I literally pulled this bag out of my whip box and was like, oh, I totally forgot about this. And I don't know how because I really love the pattern and this yarn is so nice for it. It's coming out beautifully. Um, but cables are also like, I'm again, I'm impatient. I'm a, a TV knitter. I like to sit and, and like listen to a podcast or watch TV and veg out while I do it. Um, which means I end up doing a lot more simple patterns because even though I love the result with cables and I think I'm perfectly capable of doing cables, it's not as enjoyable for me. The process becomes more work than leisure. So this is the Osgood slipover from Joan Ho. And again, I love it. The yarn is from Knit Crate. I don't remember which one it is, and I don't think I have my yarn labels in here. I do not. But I will put it on the screen uh, later. It's definitely got some alpaca. This is the drapiest, softest, fluffiest. And I'm very excited about it, but also I'm a super seasonal knitter. I'm a seasonal person in general. I love seasonal routines and holidays and you know decor and stuff like that and this super fluffy thick warm slipover is going to be lovely and I'm not going to care about it until fall because right now I'm starting to get into knitting tank tops and t-shirts and light pullovers again um because I'm gearing up for summer I'm excited for warm weather so that one might might be in my uh whip pile for a while because I'm not going to power through it if I'm not feeling it, especially with cables, because I really have to pay attention to those. Okay, so this one's cute. This one is called the Yorkville Wrap, and I don't know the person who wrote it, but I got it out of a book I have of interweave knits patterns. So it's, oops, it's a V-shaped wrap. That looks so pretty. I chose to do it in this mohair so it's see-through. The pattern doesn't have it that way. They just have it in like a solid worsted, I believe. But I chose to use two strands of Hobby Diablo in the colorway Oyster. So it's see-through. I love it. It's so fluffy. It's off-white but with the barest hint of pink, I think. It's got this lace portion at the bottom. And what you do is you make two of these identically and once they're a certain uh, length, you join them and decrease at the same time so that they make a v-shaped wrap and i'm making this because i'm going to be in a wedding this fall and i wanted something like light and pretty uh but also warm because it's a labor day wedding it might be cold in september i'm not sure so i got this so that i can wear it over my bridesmaids dress and hopefully still look classy but be warm and cozy in my fuzzy wrap so this is the Diablo from Hobby. It's a uh, fake mohair. It might have real mohair in it. 
but it's mostly not real mohair. Yes, 40% acrylic, 30% mohair, 30% polyamide. So, I like it. I don't mind cheap yarns. I'm a cheap yarn person sometimes. Okay. I do have a finished object, a nearly finished object. Um, I just wrapped this one up and blocked it, but I do want to do one finishing touch. So I made myself this card again. It is a Granny Stitch Hexy card again. I think it's so cute. It will look ridiculous with this striped shirt, but we're going to do it anyway. So it's very cropped on me, but I like cropped things, especially like I said, I'm gearing up for summer and warm weather, so I want it to be a little cropped. Um, this was a set of colors that came in a package together. It was six balls of fingering weight acrylic. Um, I had two sets that I had been given as a gift and I didn't want to buy more because it comes from a store that I don't like to shop at and support anymore. So I was just trying to use what I have. So I used this gray color to fill it in. The gray is the only one that didn't come from the pack, the blues and the pink. The pinks, there's multiple pinks, and the yellow all came from the pack. And then the gray was the Michaels store brand yarn. It's acrylic, but I think it's called wool-like. Um, and that's been sitting in my stash for a while. I bought a bunch of that during the pandemic, and I got really frustrated when I started a project with it and tried to frog it, and it just was being awful, and I ended up throwing away the project and setting it aside and not knowing what to do with that yarn since. But it's, they're both fingering weight acrylic and similarly soft and I think it worked for this. The only thing I still want to do for this particular project is uh, do some elastic thread here because as you can see I had a terrible time with the cuffs. I couldn't get them. I tried them 10 different ways. Uh, the pattern, it's not really a pattern, it's kind of a loose tutorial, it's like guidelines that I found and I can link that one below. I, it's from a channel called Craft and a Cuppa. Um, it's a nice idea, but it's a really long tutorial. It's two and a half hours, so I didn't watch the whole thing through. I didn't need it in real time. I kind of just got started in the beginning making the hexes and ran with it. Um, and then at the end, this whole thing was one big game of yarn chicken because I only had those two sets of yarn and I was not going to buy more. So I know I should have added more rows to the end here to make these sleeves longer, but I had about this much worth of color repeats left because I really cut it close with all of the colors. Um, so I decided just to make them a little shorter, I guess they're bracelet length. Um, once I get elastic thread in the end of these cuffs, I will like it a lot more. But I didn't use any of her directions or suggestions for the cuffs at all. I kind of just used the measurement guide that she suggested and got started with the hexes and ran with it and kind of made it up as I went. So it's not the most finessed finished object I've ever made, but I think it's cute. I think it's kitschy and it's a nice summery little piece. There we go. I don't know if you can see all the colors. I do love these colors together. I think they came out really cute. So now let's do some acquisitions. Um, this first one is not an acquisition at all. Uh, like I said, everything here I uh, have gotten since I did my yarn stash video and since I added all of my yarn stash painstakingly to Ravelry to make my digital uh, stash and my digital queue and everything. And this I found in a basket in my house a couple weeks after I did all of that. Um, so I thought I would share it here because technically I'm adding it to my yarn stash after the fact, although it was a birthday gift from my mom and it's been sitting in my house since December. Um, I guess there's four balls of this Hobby Metallico. It's this copper, but it's got this kind of purplish navy halo on it. It's really cute. I have no idea what I will make with this yet. I don't even know how big it is, but I really like it. I'll find something. But it hits me as a very wintry color, like the deep tone and the coppery uh, sheen to it is is a cold weather color to me, so I do not plan on using it anytime soon. I recently had to travel for work. Like I mentioned, I was doing travel knitting and I cast on that sweater duster for my uh, travel knitting video and to work on on the road. 
But while I was in Buffalo for work, I stopped at a local yarn store there. It was really, really cute. It was called Ravenlow Fibers. And I didn't realize this until I got there, but it's actually like this adorable little country gift shop that just has a room on the back that is all yarn and a little yarn store. And it's just absolutely a dream aesthetic for me. It was just like cute antique overload which like maybe I don't need my whole house to look like this, but it was so fun to be in a store like this. Um, I spent more time in the little gift shop, I think ultimately, than I did in the yarn store because the yarn shop was so cute, but it was pretty small. It was just the one room. And this little country gift shop was so big and so extensive. And it was like a mix of all sorts of local craft items, not like crafting items, but crafted items and antiques and it was just so pretty and I got a whole bunch of little cute items um, but I did get a couple things in the yarn store. I got this which I don't even know what it is. I have no idea. I think it's wool. It feels like wool. Um, it's got to be about fingering or sport weight but it's just such a pretty colorway. This speckled hand dyed she just had a bin of mini skeins so I don't know anything about it but I thought it was really pretty and I picked it up and then this one, I love so much. This base just hits me just right. I love it. It is 50% merino, 50% cotton, and it's fingering. And it's pretty soft, but it's very squishy. The colorway reminds me weirdly of one from Sugar and Cream. It's like that, that cotton dish yarn, dish, what is it called? Dish cloth yarn. Um, they have a very similar colorway to this, but this one, it's just a lot richer. This one I think is very pretty and I just love it. And if they had had more, I would have bought it. This was the only one I could find. And this was the only one on this base at all that I could find. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I just immediately vibe so hard with this one. This is from Monica Greco. And I think it's the company might be divine. When I was in the yarn shop, I asked if this was a local dyer and she said, well, she was local, but she recently moved away. So apparently she's still dying somewhere. She's still dying yarn. Hope she's not dying. Um, Monica Greco is still dying yarn elsewhere, but no longer in the greater Buffalo area. But I thought this would be a cute little souvenir to have and I'm sure I'll find something for it. The cotton content gives me high hopes for the the warm weather coming up. Maybe I'll knit a little tank top out of it or something. I did get a couple sewing things also. So I found this very pretty fabric on joannefabrics.com and I ordered it and did a store pickup for it. I'm a sucker for strawberries. Like I have strawberry print stuff all over my craft room but also just all over my life. I don't know. I, I can't tell you why the image of the strawberry makes me so happy, but it truly does. It's just such pure joy from looking at strawberries. And I love pink also. And just this, this print makes me so happy. It's just a, like a quilting cotton. Um, I want to make a dress out of it. I got three yards and I found this pattern on Amazon from an Australian company. So I'm excited. I've never used anything from this company before. Like I said, I don't sew a lot. I get ambitious about sewing. I buy a lot of sewing supplies and sewing tools and things because I love the idea of sewing, but I don't actually do a lot of it and I tend to get frustrated when I get started. So this one, I really hope that I can I can jump into and finish because I really would love to have this strawberry dress. I think like this, not the strawberry dress, but like, I love this. I want to make this one work and maybe, maybe this will like spark a love of sewing that I haven't found yet because right now I just love sewing supplies way more than I love actually sewing. All right. So. I stopped at my local yarn store today because they do this super cute thing. Um, my local yarn store is called Nitty Gritty Yarns in Syracuse. Um, and they do this 
this periodic thing where it's called Nitty Fix. And it's like a subscription box, but you don't subscribe. You just buy it as a one-off. They'll send out an email blast saying, we're going to be doing another Nitty Fix. Pay ahead of time, and you pick it up in store. And mine was ready. Uh, I was so excited, so I went in just to pick up my Nitty Fix. And then, of course, I ended up getting a couple other things. So I'm going to show you the things I picked out first, and then I'm going to show you some of the stuff from the Nitty Fix, because... It's just so fun to have a little curated yarn box. So the first thing I picked out in store was, I just thought this was the cutest thing. Jigsaw puzzles are one of my auxiliary hobbies that I never make enough time for and I have a lot of, but then don't often actually do. But I just thought this was so cute. This is, this puzzle is called Grandma's Sewing Station, but it might as well be Bailey's Sewing Station because it's just, a large disarrayed clutter of sewing supplies and nobody's sewing look at that actually there's like a vintage needle book in the middle and I have this needle book <laughs> like Bailey's sewing station and right. so then the other thing that I grabbed while I was there this yarn and this is the softest yarn I think I've ever touched and I know a lot of people I'm a big texture person like I love textures but I love visual textures more than physical textures a lot of the time I love like the look of all of the things in here but I'm not necessarily like the person that's always feeling everything. Um, these are incredible. I tend to buy yarns based on color. I'm such a sucker for color and uh, like I said visual texture but this is like double trouble. Like these are the softest thing I've ever touched in my life and this colorway is incredible. It is like just a spray of muted pastel gorgeous and then this is just a cool gray to go with it because I don't normally spend this much on single skeins of yarn but I could not walk away from this um, it is from Juniper Moon Farm this stuff is 94% cotton with a little bit of nylon I do not understand how they made cotton this soft. It seems impossible to me. Anyway, I got these to go together. Again, maybe a tank top or a t-shirt. There's not a ton here, but I couldn't walk away from it. It's just, these are the most beautiful pastel colors that I think I've ever seen. Um, this is why, this is why she has you pick up your Nitty Fix in the store, you know, because I can't walk past this without paying $50 for two skeins of yarn. Okay. All right, so here is my Nitty Fix. This is just is this custom tape. And it's just like a subscription box, except it's way more fun. Um, and you don't have to get every single one. You just get them individually. Okay, my dear Annie, can we share? And I have my lap for a while. Thank you. So she wraps it up so pretty. I opened it earlier. I could not wait, guys. Like, I'm not gonna... It's not like an unboxing. I don't have to be surprised. It was like Christmas morning. She wrapped every little item individually. And previous iterations of Nitty Fix have not had so many small little notions in place. So I wasn't expecting it. And it genuinely felt like having a stocking on Christmas morning. It was so fun. And also, I should say before we get into it, there's a couple things in here that I almost bought in the shop when I was looking around today, and I'm glad I didn't. I wonder if she would have stopped me. Probably not, because she knew I was picking this up. So there's a little thank you card, and it came with a sticker that says, I love my local yarn store. The first thing I opened was a little bottle of wool soap, which I always need more, and 
I have a big bottle that I got from them from a different promotion they did. It was, you know, if you spend a certain amount, you get a, a gift with purchase, but it was a large one. And I've gotten so many of the little packets of wool soak as included or like inc free with purchase kind of thing. I don't think I've ever paid for wool soak, but I'm going to keep stocking up. I love this stuff. And it's not cheap either. I'm glad to have it. So... Um, this is all of the little notions that came with it. I'm like giddy. Can you tell? I did not expect this. So there's this little pouch. And again, all of these little knickknacks were individually wrapped when I got it. So it truly felt like Christmas. So there's this little macaron case. It's got some stitch markers inside. Uh, one of these little digital row counter clicky rings. There's a couple pieces of candy in here. Excuse me, Annie is very interested in my nitty picks. Oh, they also do this thing that's really cute that every box has a gift card in it for the store, but it's a randomized amount. So, you know, I'm always going to play the odds. I'm always going to buy my nitty picks because it might pay for itself, right? And it kind of doesn't matter if it doesn't because I love this stuff anyway. Um, this is a marker. I'm not exactly sure what kind of marker this is. I wonder if it's a like water soluble one or something like that. These are really cute and this is so funny. I was in there asking the owner, Carrie, about if she has any of those little pendants that you can use to like snip or cut yarn because I'm doing all this travel next month and I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to take any sort of like snips or anything into a ballpark and she didn't have them. And I wonder if she knew as I was asking this that I was gonna open this and be able to use it at home because it looks like a pen but it's scissors. I mean, it's kind of, it kind of seems weapon-like, but I feel like I can get it into a ballpark because it's based, it looks like a pen, right? Isn't that too funny? I love it. Apropos. And then again, another thing I was considering buying when I was in the store, but I didn't have to, is she has these um, stitch keeper things, the little rubber cord that you slip onto the end of your needles so that you can try on your work or... Um, at least just keep it safe while you use the needles for something else. And they came with a little stitch marker in there too. This is just too cute. I just can't. Pop all my little notions back in the pouch. Oh my goodness. And then the, the Nitty Fix always comes with at least one ball of yarn and she chooses patterns that are often free patterns um, that are often free patterns from Ravelry but that use the appropriate amount for the yarn she's giving you. So this one is pretty neck warmer. I haven't looked it up yet. It's cute. I don't know if I'll use it but I'll definitely save it because I hoard knitting patterns. And here's the yarn it came with. So squishy! They're also from Juniper Moon. It says 100% alpaca and you can feel it. Look at the drape. Oh my gosh. So pretty. So, oh, I can't read the colorway. This one is in the colorway Mountain Majesty. Purple Mountain Majesty. I get it. I get it. It's so pretty. It's so nuanced. You can't really see it here, but there's like every color of the rainbow up close in this purple. I love it. And then this green is also so pretty, but it's, it's, all I see is like blue. I see like a little halo of navy blue. Oh, and this color is called Juniper. 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 I assumed there was more, but the price tag wasn't coloring it, covering anything. So this is Juniper Moon Harriet. Oh, they are so soft. Who knows what I'll use it for, but I love it, dude. This is so cute. I'm so pleased that she does these. They're so fun. Um, I know that she does offer shipping on them, so I don't think you have to live in the Syracuse area to be, to be able to uh, get one of these. They're so cute. Okay, so the last thing I have for acquisitions is my Knit Crate box. Um, I've been getting Knit Crate for a while, a couple years now. 
And it always comes with a little extra item. The theme for this month is conservatory. And the little extra is just this tiny notebook, which I will use. I do go through notebooks. And this is just the right size for me. It's cute. It's not particularly yarny, but it's cute. And then two skeins of this very pretty, like for the theme conservatory, this is just perfect, right? Isn't this just the most like luscious vegetal green? Oh, I love it. It is the colorway. I don't know. It just says conservatory. Is this the conservatory colorway of the conservatory theme? I don't know. It's beautiful. It's merino wool. It's DK weight. And this is Knitology Wisp. Oh, really cute. I love it. So I have a whole giant stash of two skeins of Knit Crate at a time, but I can't stop. I just, they're so pretty. Every time I'm like, maybe I'll skip a month. I just love them too much. They're too cute. All right, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out. I had a lot of fun making this podcast. I hope uh, I can make another one on a regular basis and keep going with these. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, subscribe or stick around or whatever you want to do. Check out some of my other videos. I hope you want to, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.